The regime survives by repression, by complete blockade on information, with the security services and field tactics. Sometimes people describe North Korea as a black hole of information, and that black hole has become significantly darker over the last few years. In North Korea, people are forced to cry when their leader dies, showing the extreme control the government has over them. Every tiny mistake can destroy a family's future because the government watches everyone, all the time. Videos that leak out of North Korea are shocking and rare, revealing the harsh ways people are forced to live. What more terrifying truths are hidden in these videos? Let us uncover the chilling secrets North Korea doesn't want us to see. The unseen power of fear in North Korea. One well-known example is the overwhelming public display of sadness after the death of Kim Il-sung, North Korea's first leader in 1994. The government ordered everyone to show extreme grief in public. People across the country were seen crying uncontrollably, a sight that was both unsettling and confusing to people outside of North Korea. The state controlled every part of this mourning period, from lowering flags to stopping all celebrations for 10 days. This event, involving over 2 million people, showed just how much control the government has over its citizens' lives, highlighting their deep isolation and manipulation. Another intense moment occurred when a 25-year-old soldier named Oh Chong Song made a desperate run across the border to South Korea in 2017. During his escape, he was shot five times, showing how determined he was to leave North Korea behind. After he was rescued, doctors found that he was suffering from severe health problems, including infections from large parasitic worms. This highlighted the harsh living conditions in North Korea and the extreme measures people are willing to take to escape, driven by the fear of what might happen next. Even more telling is the fact that Oh was a high-ranking officer and the son of a major general. His escape showed that even those at the top levels of society are desperate under the regime's rule. But this wasn't the worst part. Another shocking incident took place in 2017 when Kim Jong-nam was assassinated at a busy airport using a toxic nerve agent. This event revealed just how ruthless the North Korean regime can be when it feels threatened, even if it means killing someone from the ruling family. The public assassination using such a deadly substance showed the government's willingness to go to extreme lengths to maintain control and silence any opposition. These stories paint a picture of a society where the government tightly controls everything, demanding public loyalty with the threat of severe punishment. Fear of the outside world is instilled in people from a young age. From orchestrated public displays of grief, to terrifying escape attempts, to the cold-blooded assassination of political threats, these incidents depict a regime that rules with absolute control, using fear as its main tool. The oppressive atmosphere forces citizens to constantly show their loyalty, keeping them in a constant state of fear, making their reality as strange and horrifying as any fictional dystopia. But what happened next was even more disturbing. In a busy Malaysian airport, a scene unfolded that seemed like something out of a spy movie. Kim Jong-nam, the estranged older half-brother of North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un, was attacked in broad daylight. Rumors swirled that Kim Jong-un might have been behind this sinister plot. Jong-nam, who had fallen out of favor with the ruling family and was living in exile, became a target. As he walked through the airport, two women approached him and changed the course of his life forever. One of the women discreetly smeared a deadly nerve agent, VX, on his face, a substance so lethal that even a tiny amount is fatal. After the attack, a confused and panicked Jong-nam sought help from an airport receptionist, who quickly took him to the authorities. There he explained the strange attack, describing how he first felt a liquid splash on his face, followed by a cloth laced with another toxic agent being pressed against his skin. A dangerous moment in a busy crowd starts a chain of secretive events. The sinister shadows of Pyongyang's propaganda. He felt a sharp pain on his skin, but by then, the women who had attacked him had already vanished into the crowd. The poison acted fast, and Jong-nam was quickly taken to an emergency vehicle. Sadly, he died within minutes, far from his homeland. Meanwhile, four men from North Korea, 
later revealed to be spies, quietly left the scene and returned to Pyongyang, escaping any punishment. Others involved were briefly detained, but soon released. In a hidden part of North Korea, in the city of Suji, a different story was playing out. A public trial was held to scare the population. The accused were ordinary people who had watched South Korean movies or listened to K-pop music. The government saw these activities as threats to its strict rule. The state-controlled media broadcasted the trial, presenting these actions as serious crimes, though they hinted at other, even more severe offenses. While the punishments were not revealed, they were expected to be harsh, showing the government's strong reaction to any form of dissent. But this wasn't the worst part. These scare tactics are just one of the many harsh realities people face under the North Korean government, which is also marked by severe food shortages and widespread hunger. In 2021, a study from a research institute in Seoul revealed that North Korea produced far less food than needed, failing to meet the basic needs of its people. The United Nations also reported ongoing food shortages and predicted future problems. As a result, millions struggle to find enough to eat, with thousands of children under five suffering from severe malnutrition, showing how the government neglects its people. As we dive deeper into the lesser-known aspects of life in North Korea, we find something interesting in the streets of Pyongyang. Female traffic officers, chosen more for their looks than their traffic management skills, stand at major intersections. These women have become symbols of the government's focus on appearance over effectiveness and have gained an unusual sort of fame, even inspiring a Traffic Girl of the Month feature on a website. This strange fascination shows how the regime uses a mix of propaganda and superficial charm to distract from more serious issues. Life in North Korea often feels like a carefully planned performance, with the government controlling every detail to keep its power and maintain a climate of fear. The real struggles of the people are hidden behind a facade of control and spectacle. But that's not all. Traffic control in Pyongyang is more than just about safety. It's a deeply rooted part of the culture, extending far beyond simple road rules. The traffic controllers in their neat uniforms aren't just managing the sparse traffic. They are part of a well-orchestrated propaganda campaign. Their images appear on stamps, flyers, posters, and even billboards, celebrating their almost ceremonial role in the capital. The government's reach even extends to children's toys, with dolls modeled after these traffic controllers, serving both as playthings and early tools for indoctrination. This glorification of basic roles hides a more troubling reality of the government's tight grip on its people, vividly shown by the severe consequences for those who try to escape this isolated nation. Take, for example, the puzzling case of Private Travis King, who suddenly ran across the heavily guarded Korean DMZ as his tour group watched. King's dash into the closed-off territory of North Korea highlights the ongoing deep tensions between the two Koreas. Since his disappearance, there has been no word from North Korea, painting a grim picture of his situation amid the ongoing chilly relations between the two sides. We look closer at lives under the strict rule of North Korea, North Korea's harsh grip on curiosity and control. King's experience isn't unique among Americans who've encountered the harsh control of North Korean authorities. Remember Otto Warmbier, the young college student who visited North Korea only for his trip to end in tragedy. Arrested for allegedly trying to take a propaganda poster, Warm Beyer was sentenced to 15 years in a labor camp. His ordeal ended tragically when he was returned to the U.S., brain-damaged and comatose, dying shortly after. But this wasn't the end of the story. His situation, like many others, highlights the extreme risks of even the slightest curiosity in a country where such actions can lead to deadly consequences. The dangers are just as severe for North Korean citizens, who face harsh punishments for engaging with foreign media. Consider two teenagers who were sentenced to hard labor simply for watching South Korean TV shows. This punishment was so severe that it involved public shaming and served as a stark warning about the regime's strict control over information. In a country where watching a foreign show can lead to such extreme consequences, 
the line between cultural interest and criminal activity becomes worryingly thin. The story centers around the themes of control and the fight for freedom, highlighting a man from North Korea who escaped to China and then bravely fled a Chinese jail. He faced serious consequences if sent back to North Korea, where even harsher punishments awaited him. His daring jump over an electric fence during his escape shows the extreme lengths people go to under North Korea's oppressive rule. These stories from North Korea, ranging from respected traffic controllers to desperate escape attempts, paint a clear picture of a country caught between its impressive public image and the harsh realities of its authoritarian rule. It's a place where strange and oppressive elements mix, and where every part of daily life is tied into the broader theme of state propaganda and control. This complicated situation provides a chilling yet fascinating look into the power struggles within one of the world's most closed-off nations. But the harsh realities don't stop there. There are rumors of someone fleeing a prison just to escape the terrible conditions at a place known as Number 10. This notorious location is where children are forced to work at a ski resort, as reported by NBC News in 2017. The report revealed a bleak scene in the mountains where workers, including very young children, were seen clearing snow-covered roads with simple tools. The children, hardly dressed for winter, used axes, sticks, and makeshift shovels to clear the way for tourists heading to the ski resort. This stark reality sharply contrasts with North Korea's portrayal of the ski resort as a national treasure. Built at a cost of $35 million and located just three hours north of Pyongyang, the resort is one of the grand projects favored by Kim Jong-un. However, beneath the resort's glamorous appearance lies a troubling reality of exploitation, where vulnerable children endure harsh conditions to maintain the illusion of a winter paradise. The plight of North Korean orphans has also gained attention in the United States. Efforts have been made to encourage Americans to adopt these children, inspired by their dire situations. The North Korean Child Welfare Act of 2012, signed by President Obama, aims to improve the lives of these children by helping with family reunions and adoptions. The act mainly focuses on helping orphans who are hidden in China and other countries, offering them a chance at a better life if they can reach South Korea. There, they have opportunities for adoption, citizenship, and education, unlike those who remain behind. But this wasn't the end of their struggles. It only revealed the depth of control in North Korea and the lengths some will go to escape it. Stories of courage and escape reveal the harsh realities of seeking freedom, the untold plight of North Korea's young defectors. However, the numbers tell a more troubling story. Each year, about 50 North Korean children under the age of 24 manage to make it to South Korea without their families but they make up only 2% of all defectors who settle there. This small percentage shows the immense risks and challenges these young people face in their quest for freedom, highlighting the dangerous paths they must navigate to escape North Korea's oppressive regime. This raises important questions about the true impact of international efforts and the real motives behind large-scale humanitarian projects. While these initiatives are often portrayed as acts of kindness and support for vulnerable groups, the actual effectiveness and tangible benefits of such policies deserve closer examination. Are these efforts really helpful, or are they just diplomatic gestures? The clear gap between the advertised intentions and the real help given to these children points to a need for a more honest look at the supposed goodwill on display. In the isolated country of North Korea, Known for its strict government control, the harsh realities of life inside its prisons are slowly being exposed. An organization called Korea Future is committed to bringing these hidden truths to light. They do this by carefully examining official documents, analyzing satellite images, studying the layouts of buildings, creating digital simulations, and collecting stories from many people who have managed to escape. These include former prisoners, witnesses to the cruelty, and even ex-officials who once enforced the regime's harsh rules but later fled. The information gathered by Korea Future paints a chilling picture of what goes on inside these prison camps. 
They've even built 3D models to show the world what these normally hidden places look like. Their investigations have uncovered over a thousand instances of severe abuse, including physical harm, forced abortions, and unjust solitary confinement. Some prisoners were so desperate they had to eat insects to survive. But the worst part isn't just the physical suffering. The emotional and mental scars left on these inmates often go unnoticed. Solitary confinement, not knowing what will happen to them, and being treated like they're less than human. All these are meant to break their spirits, keep them in line, and prevent them from speaking out. Still, some manage to escape, like North Korean orphans who find refuge in South Korean schools or homes, showing just how far some are willing to go for a chance at freedom. The stories Korea Future shares are shocking and reveal a clear pattern of the North Korean government using fear to control its people. These reports don't just document what's happening, they are urgent calls for the world to take action against the ongoing human rights abuses in places like North Korea. They also raise important questions about how effective international sanctions and responses are in stopping these terrible acts. But how many more reports and simulations will it take before real action is taken? The death of a young woman in a field in 2010, after she spoke with a journalist, is a stark reminder of the dangers faced by those brave enough to speak out about what's really happening in North Korea. Each story of cruelty and every life lost adds to the growing demand for strong international measures to stop these severe human rights violations. Organizations like Korea Future are crucial, not just for the data they collect, but for their efforts to push the world to act by exposing the severe and often hidden injustices happening in North Korea. As they continue to document and share these heartbreaking stories, they hope for a global response that will help end the immense suffering endured by so many innocent people under such a harsh regime. Personal struggles and tragedies show the tough life under tight control, the hidden crisis in North Korea's outer districts. One particularly gripping story involves an undercover agent who met a severely malnourished woman in one of North Korea's poorer districts. She could barely speak as she told him how she lost her family and home, which left her with nothing. She was gathering grass to feed rabbits, a strange but necessary task in a place where even the smallest comforts are hard to come by. This poignant moment was secretly recorded and smuggled out, bypassing the tight state control over information and aired worldwide. The footage sparked a global wave of sympathy for her. Tragically, she was found dead shortly after her story went public, suggesting a darker force at work to silence those who managed to share their stories with the outside world. And this isn't the only tragic case. The grim fate of two North Korean fishermen who tried to escape after allegedly being involved in a mutiny that killed 16 crew members also caught international attention. Their story took a dark turn when they were captured and forced to return to North Korea, a scene captured in distressing images as they were handed over to waiting North Korean officials at the border. This incident, the first of its kind since the Korean War ceasefire in 1953, was widely condemned for highlighting the brutal treatment that awaits those who dare to defy the North Korean regime. After the scuffle, Grisham, showing determination and dedication to her job, successfully led the press out of the building. Her actions helped maintain order during the chaotic rush of reporters seeking updates. Despite the earlier confrontation, she appeared unharmed alongside President Trump at the demilitarized zone, demonstrating her resilience and ability to recover quickly in tough situations. The day before, President Trump hinted at something significant. He tweeted about potentially meeting Kim Jong-un at the DMZ and even crossing into North Korea. This idea added drama to the situation reflecting Trump's unpredictable leadership style. Meanwhile, Kim Jong-un was traveling to Russia on a train marked by yellow stripes, a symbol of North Korea's mix of luxury and military readiness. This event, along with the train journey, highlights the complex nature of global politics, where actions and symbols carry deep meanings. 
Leaders often use bold moves and symbols like an armored train to display power. But behind the high-profile meetings, there are often hidden tensions, much like Grisham's earlier encounter. These moments show that global diplomacy involves more than just discussions. It's a blend of spectacle, strategy, and sometimes even physical confrontations. But that's not the worst part. These events remind us that global politics isn't just about decisions. It's also about managing perceptions and handling unexpected challenges. Kim Jong-un's armored train, with its heavy emphasis on defense, mirrors his leadership style, paranoid, isolated, and always on guard. The train moves slowly, much like the regime itself, which operates in secrecy and maintains control through harsh methods. Recent reports by Human Rights Watch have revealed shocking conditions in North Korea's pre-trial detention centers, where suspects face worse treatment than animals. These findings are backed by testimonies from former detainees and officials, showing a system where basic human needs are often denied as a way to break detainees' will. But even more troubling is North Korea's treatment of those accused of political crimes. Thousands of people are held in hidden prison camps with no chance to defend themselves. According to United Nations estimates, about 120,000 people are currently suffering in such conditions, almost completely erased from society. These investigations expose severe human rights abuses and corruption, highlighting the harsh reality of how laws can be twisted to oppress people. What could be the moral issues with using international forces to change governments? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.